Hello, and welcome to the Bride Tender Podcast. I'm your host, Esty Gordon, and I'm here to tend to the brides like I tend to the bar. So mix yourself a cocktail, and let's get ready to discuss all things weddings. Today, I'm here with Sharon from Nicholson Events, and we are in Bridgeport, Connecticut at his new venue, The Knowlton, and we're gonna get into all of that. But first, um, Sharon, thank you so much for coming on my podcast. (laughs) Um, I want to talk all about this new place and your business, but first, let me ask you, how are you doing since everything that's been going on with the pandemic? Wow, we started with a loaded question here. (laughs) Wow, it's going heavy. You know, the answer is that I'm doing. Um, From day one of the the shutdown, it was nonstop, right? It's how do we, I think that's part of our our industry. When you hire somebody that to do your event, if something goes sideways, you want to make sure that a qualified person knows what to do. Well, here wasn't an event, it was our whole industry that went sideways. Right. So, went right into action. Uh, um, I started the Connecticut Event Industry Coalition uh, right away at the beginning of the pandemic um, and was pretty vocal about our industry. And um, at the same time, it allowed me a lot of time to put things in place at the building here with this new with this new business, um, and get things cleaned up and get uh, things in place so that when we did reopen, it'd be solid. So it was kind of having um, a soft open, extended soft open for a year. Um, so it was a lot of a lot of prep, a lot of doing this whole year. Isn't it kind of funny how, um, because you have like, you and I obviously have a similar situation. We work in the same industry and we're both from tri-state area. So we know that like we were hit even harder than some other areas because they just opened up before we did. But that in times of like complete like darkness, like we're able to like, we had like other things going on, which is like you had just taken over this place so you had that time to really focus and you know kind of build this to what you wanted it to be where had the pandemic not happened you might not have had necessarily the time at first to do it well it would have been more you know trial under fire right it would have been like (laughs) all right we got to event this weekend you know let's get it going and then you figure it out while you're setting up here i i literally i just missed working so much i literally came in and rig lighting uh put up sound systems did stuff and tested things out really tested out the acoustics tested out what do we need where the deficits and just did mock av tech stuff here so it'd be perfect Um, yeah and and it's really great i mean being able to to run everything up in the up in the trussing above everybody and we don't do anything we try to do nothing on the ground opens up the room even more Right. So when we're flying speakers, we're flying lights, like there's no wires, there's nothing. It's awesome. Like that, that's such a treat for me because usually you have that for bigger setups. But you don't have it when you're in to, to do an event for a quick, you know, you, one event loaded out, you're loading in another event. You don't have the time to do all this. So um, that was a treat this year to be able to play with the space. Yeah, and this is a really cool space, and I want we're we're gonna get into all of that. But I want to ask you, how did Nicholson Events get started? What can you tell us about about that part of your business? So, I started in the industry at a very young age. I was 16, and I lied about my age, and I was a <laughs> I was a hip hop b boy dancer at parties, um, and I was telling you earlier before the camera was rolling that um, I used to dance with bands, right? So right. DJs and, and all of that weren't prominent at events yet. So um, very quickly progressed into emceeing and DJing. And I was working for a couple of companies and I didn't, you know, they, they, what they were doing was great, but my way was much more hands-on with my clients, a lot more personal. Um, and the other companies I was working for were much more of the factories where they'd have 20, 30 events a day at, at a time and I, I my mom's in the clothing business we have boutiques we're very hands-on we're very paying attention to one client at a time and I had a very big client um, come to me at, because I, I also speak French uh, I'm originally from North Africa so I speak French fluently and this was a French client now it was the breakout opportunity um, it was actually the owners of Chanel uh, nice. to actually 
start my own company because I had all the resources. I'd been in the industry already a whole four years. <laughs> and at 20, I started Nicholson Events. Oh, wow. So you were like a very young business owner. Right. And we started with the lighting and DJs and dancers, so all the basic stuff. And we did, we did their daughter's bat mitzvah. And that was my first client. And then we ended up doing some, some corporate stuff for them as well, which was great. Um, and then grew my, my business from there. All it usually takes is having like a good first client, right? Yeah. I, I know. That's what I, I usually tell a lot of like new business owners. It's like always like like treat your like first client like as like and, and every client as like they're special and they're like your number one because you never know what's going to spiral like from that. It could be the world's smallest job and you never know how that can enhance your business and your relationships. You know, I asked you before we start rolling, are you nervous? And you said a little bit. Yeah. And I, I'm nervous be, before every gig as if it was my first almost. Yeah. And I tell my clients, it doesn't matter if I did amazing last week or on the last event. The only event that matters to you is this event. And then I really stress that, that the most important event is the event that we're doing. Because if I mess up your party, that's going to stay with you. These are life events. Right. Um, and I take, I, I don't rest on, oh, we, well, we've been doing this for a long time, 27 years. You know, I say your part, your part is the most important. I, every detail matters on that event. I mean, you're only as right. good as the party you're doing. That's, that's, that's our motto. I mean, that's really um, hands on. So as much as I'm, I'm so grateful for all the experience, I care and get nervous about each event we walk, we walk into. <laughs> I, I do too. Every single time I'm getting people down the aisle, I don't know what it is, but right before then I get a little nervous as if it's like me going down the aisle and yeah. I'm like, why am I nervous to do this? I do this all the time, but it's, um, you know, every client is, is different in their own way. And you want to make sure that like, those special moments don't go unnoticed. Yeah, I think a lot of brides and grooms and families don't realize how personally invested a lot of us are. Yeah. Um, I got to speak with so many event planners and so many people in the industry over this year. That was the one good thing about COVID is I made a lot of new friends in the, in, in the industry, but realized how much, you know, it's not a unique thing to be so caring. Like everybody really cares. Yeah. A lot of us really care about that. This is a special moment for you that walking down the aisle is going to go perfect. We really care. It's yeah. not just our job. We're emotionally invested in each event. Yeah. When I, when I like was a teenager, I started out in the industry catering parties on the side. And I know I told you that before, but, um, and I didn't think that that was going to like be a part of my career. It was more of my like after school and weekend job. And I ended up like loving it. And I would see all the ceremonies go on and the parties and the, the entrances into the ballroom. And I was like, one of the best things of having a job like that and being in this industry, you know, growing up in the industry is that you're part of the best day in people's lives. Right. It's you're part of all of the happy monumental moments. Right. And I'm like, why would I want to be in any other industry when like I'm in like the happiest industry? Right. Right. That, it's amazing. Well, you know, we get to be in that memory and relive it. Yeah. yeah. You know, uh, it's funny because I'll do a, a wedding ceremony. I will get teary, no matter how, <laughs> how many, how many I'm there, and uh, it's truly special that that's what our lives are, are filled with. So. Yeah, and especially now in in these times of this of this pandemic, where people postponed their weddings or did smaller groups instead of the the bigger party that they were used to. It was like you really got to know people even more personally than before that I felt really like touched in a way, like seeing them go down the aisle and that kind of moment. And Especially because you probably dealt with them two or three times more than you usually would because of the rescheduling. That's definitely and true. And replanning. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes, I know. Well, I'm I'm hoping that we're now over the hump yes. of all that as we now see the world and, you know, more so than that, New York, Connecticut, New Jersey, where we're from, um, opening up more yes. than, than what we've what seen. Today, the, so in two days, no more mask requirements in Connecticut. I know. 
I'm in New York, so I'm waiting for that rule yeah. over there, but I know I might need to bring myself to Connecticut more yeah. often. <laughs> but yeah, no, and that's that's great. I mean, it's just showing a big leap toward the future. Yeah. So now, what can you tell us about the Knowlton? This is like your new baby, your new like big project, and this place is huge yeah. and has so <laughs> much to offer. I'm like, oh my gosh. Um, what can you tell us about this? So I've been on the road doing events for a long time and I always wanted a home base. You know, it's so nice when people are coming to you. And when I saw this 150 year old, old factory on the river, I, I, I just fell in love instantly. It, it, it took a very long time to make this deal happen. We were working on it for over two years. Oh, wow. And then um, it, it, was, it, was a, it was a tough deal to make happen, but when I saw the spaces, like this, this boathouse, 9,000 square foot, 27 foot peak, and we put in the glass doors, but just this deck right. alone was, is just, it's just phenomenal. Um, I wanted to create, so now I have my tableau, right? I can create whatever I want. So I wanted to create really this special space uh, on the planet. Uh, there's 27 artist studios in the main building. So there's painters, photographers, so there's, there's an art vibe, there's an art, right. just there's a soul to this building that's very, uh, very well rooted in art. And I said, I always was enamored by uh, Wynwood in Miami, and I, I just I had to create my own little Wynwood. Um, yeah. Art changes people's perception. Art, I feel, is a great way to start conversation, and I said, this building, uh, it's, it's scarred over the years with storms, with buildings that were here that were removed. And to kind of unify it and redefine it, the murals, creating a mural park outside is what we decided to do. Um, the first mural we put up was the Hope Mural, and we did that right when the pandemic started. Oh, wow. Um, to just put out positivity and, and uh, again, a conversation started, because hope means can so much for different people and uh, I still would like to organize a conversation on on hope and uh, and having this venue just now allows me to create events we want to we want to have um, seminars here we want to have cultural dinner nights yeah. where you know I keep saying it, the Argentine tango night like I want to I, I love that I was ballroom dancer they, at one oh point. my god <laughs> so can you imagine you do a, a, this you do is, a dinner here this is the perfect space for that kind of environment for sure I've done I did a lot of competitions back in the day. No way. I know. That's I know. Awesome. I know. No, it's beautiful. I, I don't know if I like show off no, that that's vibe, amazing. but <laughs> and this, I mean, even like the flooring in here, it's like perfect. You add in some tables, you add in right. some chairs, you have the ambiance for that. Right. Um, I, again, the, and that's this building is just craving that kind of stuff and that kind of energy. So, on the event side, when I found this building and it has three event spaces, so we can host small events in the Armstrong Gallery, which you'll probably right. drop an image here, <laughs> in the Armstrong Gallery. And then we have uh, another gallery that we're about to remodel that we're going to call the Wilder Gallery after my son. I love that. And then uh, the Boathouse. And all three spaces will connect. So we, oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. So we'll actually, we actually in September have a buyout where they're having the bat mitzvah ser service in the Armstrong Gallery. And then they're moving to the Wilder Gallery for the cocktail hour. And, and then, then we in here, for, to the here reception. for reception. That's cool. You know what I was just thinking as you you know you were saying about how you were kind of in the works for this for like two years, is that only people who are like really understand our business and understand like you know art and artists mind and creativity and like having a creative mind can drive past this and know like this is the right space but if you're not in our world you're gonna be like you're out of your mind i don't see it yeah. i don't see it but like 
I pulled up, I immediately saw it. I, I totally understand. And I think that your vision of, you know, here being an event space and the fact, you know, we talked about how you have uh, different offices for artists and things like that. You have photographers in there. You have um, hair and makeup, Everything. you know, people in there. And, and it's perfect because somebody getting married or or having a sweet 16 or a you know a big bar bat mitzvah or or even like a fashion show or anything right. like that they can have everything on site for them they don't have to worry about going here here and here right. before coming yeah it could totally be a one stop and shop here uh, you know it's very interesting too coming into a venue from the planning and logistics side because a lot of the venues they come from the catering side absolutely so yep. one of the things we're doing is we're putting more bathrooms than we actually need. And we're making them unisex so that everyone feels like they have a place. But also, I always notice the ladies are waiting for the bathroom and the men are in and out. Right. Well, guess what? We're going to even out the playing field. <laughs> you know, um, so, you know, we wanted to create a, a flow there. We're putting in a 750 square foot prep area for, the, for catering. And then on top of that, we're putting That's in great. 12 circuits so that you can hook up your coffee makers and not worry about blowing. Sir. So I've talked to a lot of, I know what's happened over the years, and I've talked to a lot of caterers and saying, what's your dream yeah. if you're coming in to have in that prep area, like power? And then for the DJs, for the bands, we're going to have six circuits there, six circuits there, circuits up there. So, <laughs> you know, we're, we're making sure like all the logistical things that I've come up against over the years are not an issue here. Well, I think having your own, you know, DJ and event business has been like such a blessing when it comes to now opening the space because you know everything that you need involved yeah. that like maybe somebody else would not have known. You know about the electric and what's needed. Right. You know about the bathrooms and what's needed. Yes. You know, where a lot of people, they might not think about those little details, but when, you work, when you've worked events, you know, every weekend for so many years, you're like, and you're doing load ins and load outs and you're like, I had to bring 700 extension cords yeah. because there was nowhere for me to, <laughs> to plug in. And I'm like, and I'm not even like ever on the electrical side, right. but even I know right. that it's, it's tough. Yeah. Yeah. We make sure the load in is easy for people too. Um, yeah. All those things. So um, it's such a treat to have a home base. Definitely. It, it must feel nice to have a home base. Um, I can imagine, especially going and, and doing all these parties all the time and you're going back and forth, back and forth. But now it's like you have like a place during the week too to like call home and go to and have your own office set up and have all right. of that. Yeah, and if the clients want to demo something for their events, even if they're not here, I can show you what a video wall looks like. I can show you what the moving heads look like. I can set up the photo booths and show you the different photo booths. I can make this my showroom if I needed to for a client. So it's so, again, when you have your own venue, you can do anything you want, right? Yes, so that's it's very awesome. true. And your venue that's on the water, which is, I mean, hello, like prime real estate oh, for people. Right. Rhyme. Right. Yeah. The On the water and no real traffic or that you could hear. I mean, we hear the well, birds. we, yeah, we have the windows <laughs> open here. So as you guys can see, um, there's absolutely no sound from the outside. Just that one it's bird. That one bird, you know, he wants to be part of the video. You know, growing up in Manhattan, right? And you go mm -hmm. even on the island. Yeah. There's a lot of movement and there's a tranquility here. And we're in the biggest city in Connecticut. We're in Bridgeport, and it's awesome. Yeah. And even the water, this is an estuary, so the fresh water meets the Long Island Sound salt water. So there was constant moving water, and it's and it's not it's not smelly. It's awesome. Yeah. Um, I, I'm still amazed every time I walk out here. I mean, every time I walk the property. And it's so close. You're so close to Manhattan. You're so close to Long Island. People can take the ferry oh. right over here. Have you taken the ferry? Um, I haven't, but I'm getting there. You it's know what? Awesome. We almost did today. Take it here. Um, there's a bar. There's a bar car. There's a I bar know. Section. I know. I was like, but I was like, I sh we shouldn't have just taken the ferry. But you know what? From where I live on Long Island, it's usually faster to drive. So I was like, oh, like I'll just drive it. Um, but yeah, next time I'm taking the ferry because I might as well just like, enjoy the ride. Cool. We have one artist in the building um, who actually lives right by Port Jeff, and they hop on the ferry. They don't drive on it. It's like 12 bucks. Yeah. Hop on the ferry to come work here and go back. 
Oh, wow. And that's probably not that far of a ride. Honestly. No, they're right by Port Jeff and we're five, five minutes by, you could walk to the ferry from here. Oh, wow. I didn't even I mean, realize it's a little it's bit longer of a walk, but it's yeah. walkable. Yeah. No, I mean, it's definitely convenient for anywhere that you need to go. So, I mean... Yeah, um, the, the train station's right here, so if you came from Grand Central or 100th, you're here in under an hour. Yeah. It, it's And we're on an express route. You can actually... The Excella from... We'll go from Boston to Bridgeport to New York. Oh, okay. So there's a, this this infrastructure here is awesome, but people don't realize. I mean, when's the last time you were told, let's go to Bridgeport? Yeah, it's been a minute. Right. <laughs> so hopefully this mural park and what we're doing with the art park out here is going to bring people. It's brought a lot of people already, so it's exciting. It's exciting when you see something that takes on a life of itself. Yeah. Right? Because with the entertainment company, I gotta, I gotta go out. I gotta go meet people. I gotta go do this. I gotta network. It's I gotta... all about the networking, right? But here, all of a sudden, with the murals, next thing I know, we have this following, and people are tagging the business on a level that never happened at an event. Like, okay, you had this great DJ. You're gonna take a picture. You might tag Nicholson Events. Yeah. But here, it's so many people, and I'm watching our following grow, 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 and it's it's just so cool. And, you know, because it's also, we know we live in a world where it's all about social media. Right. You know, and we're all trying to get on top of the, the next trends, right. and as soon as you feel like you've mastered one thing, like, then something else comes out, and I'm like, oh, God, like, I'm like the grandma of the gram, like, right. why don't I know how to do this? But over here with the murals that you have, and we're going to show them, is that they are so Instagram worthy, right. you know, and TikTok worthy and all those things. I'm not on TikTok, but you know, maybe yeah, eventually. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Come on, how much can we do in a day? How much can we do? You're doing this, this is amazing. Right, so. how much, yeah, I'm like, how much can you do? I was like, I need to like hire a young intern well, who, that's who happen, can right? teach me how to do reels because I'm now like the older one that right. doesn't know how to do that. I'm like, when did I become like, the older one. Right. You're not. You're not. <laughs> it just changes so fast. It changes so fast. Yeah. The social media in general is like a full time job. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> and we're doing our real job. That's another thing. You talk about full time job. What I've learned this year is that a lot of people don't realize that for many of us, this is a full time job. Right. There, uh, a couple of planners were saying that clients were asking them, what do you do? What's your real job? And a lot of people <laughs> and a lot of government. Yeah. doesn't realize that what we do is an industry. It's a trillion dollar industry in America. Yeah. They don't realize that. And part of it too is that we're, we're so spread out in, in government filing the NACE codes that you can't get a real metric about our industry. Um, mm -hmm. So the National Coalition is actually working on, uh, next year they're voting on the NACE codes to kind of redraw the NACE codes for the event industry. That way we can really get some metrics about what our industry is about. Well, we um, on the drive up, I was talking about how, you know, working in this industry, like people tend to look at it like it's a hobby. And sure, you can say it's a hobby because we like what we do. We enjoy what we do. But it is very much a job. It's a career. It's a lifestyle. It's teaching in college now. Uh, yeah, exactly, exactly. And like, and it's something that... Yes, it can be learned, but it's also very much a talent. Um, and, you know, when there's so many people who try to, like, bog you down with trying to get you to come down on pricing, they don't sit there and calculate the time it takes to travel, to load in and out, to set everything up. Right, you think to, it's just the four or five that it's hour just, It's just the four or five hours that, you know, like as if you're just like a DJing just for four right. or five hours, right. not the not the drive there back, the, the loading in, the setup, the breakdown, the putting together the playlist, getting the lights together, making sure it. that they're the it. right lighting right. for the room. I mean, yeah, it's a lot of work. And I think sometimes people who are outside of the industry don't realize how much Because we do our in. job well. Yeah. You know, again, this whole year we're being on the more on the political and representing the industry. I'd say if we do our job right, you don't see us. You don't, you don't know we did our job right because yeah. we did it right. Yeah. Um, we're behind the scenes and we're making sure that event goes seamless and everyone comes in and out like that was great. You know, no complaints. Um, you, we, they talked about restaurants a lot this year, but I, 
you do a banquet, let's say you do a 200 person, which is not the biggest banquet. Right. And you probably have two waiters per table, three waiters per table. Right. So you have like 20, 25 waiters there yeah. or, and service people, but you don't notice them because they're usually like maybe you have, a, you have a choice, but let's say you don't have a choice. They're walking up and they're just dropping your plate and they're leaving. So you don't have the interaction that you have in a normal restaurant, but that yeah. banquet has more people working just in catering yeah. staff alone than your average restaurant. Mm -hmm. Plus the tech crews, plus, so a lot of people it's, don't realize how many people are actually working. How many people working. are on hand for your day. Yeah, there's at least, for, per event, 20 people that have their hand in an in, average event. Yep, I, I would have to say I agree with you. I think even in today's times, it's even more than that because a lot of people are, even though they know it's an additional cost to like them as the vendor, they're bringing more staff on just in case because you got to have more hands. Right, right, right. I, this year, I think, has taught us a lot about our, our, our time worth as well. I think a lot of people in the industry really had time to look at what does my hour look like? What is my, I'm not just showing up and performing right. at the event. There is a lot going into what we do. Um, a lot of that came about because of the deposits, right? Because we had to right. refund deposits, but well, I did all this work. So yeah. now, you know, one of the things that we're more of a retainer fee, we're more like an attorney. I mean, the minute you, you hire that attorney, when they send you an email, when they call you, when they do all that, they're charging you for that time. And I think we've learned to value our time in yeah. the industry based on that. I don't Definitely. know if the brides want to hear this, but that's the truth. We work <laughs> hard for you. It's the truth. And honestly, we are very honest with the brides yeah. over here that like, you know, we're, it's important for you to know your budget and source out who yes. works, who works well within your budget right. that does it. But I like to be like very open and very transparent that like if somebody is like charging a certain amount of money, there's a reason that they are, and it's not, you know, technically up for negotiation. I mean, one of my favorite things that I keep saying, especially as we're building this place, is I'm too poor to be cheap. So if yeah. you're putting, if spending 20, 30, 40, 50, 100,000 on your event is a lot for you, then you wanna make sure that every dollar you spend is going to someone that's gonna do it right. 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 And that's, Absolutely. you know, you might be getting that DJ that's only charging you 500 bucks. But uh, what happens if his speaker blows or what happens yeah. if his computer dies or what happens if he's just not, you know, you, you got a deal, but what does that really mean? Right. And sometimes a deal is just not always financial right. and people don't always see that. It's, it's not always about spending less it's about spending the right money for the right things right. you know and to get the job done right. right so yeah i mean i don't sugarcoat it for these brides over here or anyone else really i think people <laughs> appreciate it when you're straight up i mean yeah right now a lot of people are saying well can you give me a, a break and you, i said we've been shut down for a year right I, I, we can't do anything i mean these are the this is what we, you want it done, right? This is what it's going to cost. It's harder. We don't have the volume right now to, to right. do that. Exactly. And also, it's just, you know, like we spoke about, there's so much involved that people aren't seeing behind right. the scenes. It's not just that four or five hours. It's a lot of prep before then. And, of course, you know, being business owners and stuff, we become our own accountants, our own lawyers. Right. You're like, right? yeah. I know. I feel like I've learned a lot Most about that over time. Most of us wear a lot of hats. You wear a lot of hats. You're, you're, you're your own social media star. Yeah. <laughs> you're, you're, you're your own website guru. Right. Right. You know, like, you know, it's <laughs> it's crazy. We but, work. but it's true. Yeah, you're you're working for every dollar that comes in. Yeah, I've been, I, I, I tell people, you don't realize, I've been doing parties since I was 16. So mostly I've worked every weekend of my life since right. I was 16. Was it weird having weekends off during this time? He yeah, asked my wife. I, I, I didn't really stop. Yeah. Um, I, I wasn't comfortable taking a day. Like, I didn't, this wasn't a yeah. year of break. Yeah. Um, this was a year fight harder and make sure that when, first of all, business-wise, that when things reopen, everything that you couldn't do when things were crazy, 
you can fine tune and fix and and do everything. But also, I was a very big advocate for our industry. I mean, like I like I said earlier, if we if we're in an industry where you're used to not noticing us, well, we had to scream from the hilltops. Right. Yeah. We're an industry. Help. Mm-hmm. So. When I started this podcast during, um, you know, during the very beginning of the pandemic, and my first guests were my parents, by the way, awesome. okay, on the secret to a happy marriage. It was actually like really good, and like my dad had like two martinis beforehand, so like everybody was like loose and well for the podcast. They were like still to this day my most high maintenance guests for some <laughs> reason, <laughs> but yeah, and like I started it not knowing what would happen if I would do it weekly, if anything, and it turned out to be this weekly thing because I had a lot of people who wanted to come on and I wasn't expecting any of that I thought it was going to be really hard for me to get people to come on and then I had people like I was lining up interviews week after week and I'm coming up with content and I'm like I'm changing around my own business I'm changing around my own career I'm staying within weddings but I'm doing something in addition to what I did and I always you know, like kind of like you, I always had a lot of different projects going on at the same time. I can't sit still. So like throughout the pandemic, I made myself extremely busy, not just with the podcast, but like my dad has an essential business. So where I was like shut down from weddings, like I went and I helped him every day because I was, yeah, I need, I needed somewhere to be in order to feel productive. I couldn't. So you're saying that our whole industry is a bunch of ADD overachievers? A hundred percent. One hundred percent. Take off. What is that? Yeah, you know? they're like, yeah, take off. It's like, when I have a Saturday off, I'm like, oh God. Like, I feel guilty almost yeah, because I'm like, who? I'm like, I don't have Saturdays yeah. off. Yeah, this is, it just doesn't feel, something's wrong. Yeah. This doesn't feel the, right. The entire pandemic, I was ho- like home on Sundays. And I almost felt like I got a little spoiled, you know, because like then when the weather got nice, like I just never had anything. So here's something interesting. So one of the things that we talk about and with other professionals, and it's not just in our industry, is kind of, you know, not establishing with your clients when you're off work. And even for ourselves, yeah. mm-hmm. because with computers, with internet, you have a client that will email you or even text you at one in the morning. Yep. And our impulse is we need to get back to that client right away. And we might even answer if we're up or our phone Right, thing. right. But I think for our own sanity, I think it's so important that this is our cutoff time. Back before computers or before where we were, when you left the office, you, you left, left the, the office. office. And it wasn't cataclysmic that 12 hours later you get back to somebody. Yeah. And um, I think it's important for brides, grooms to kind of have that pause and realize you hired a professional, even though you emailed at 8 p.m., that they don't answer you till 11 the next day, 11 a.m., not p.m., is okay. Yeah. And even if it's not a pressing thing, that if they take two days to get back to that email, right. It's okay. Um, And it's okay for us too where it's okay to have that Sunday off and it's tough for all of us because we love what we do but it's okay to have that Sunday off and that rare Saturday night you know yeah I used to always have so I'm I'm off from my job on Mondays and that's our day yeah that's our day and it's really you know sometimes like I busy up my Mondays so so much but once in a while I'll have a Monday where I'm like really fully off and I'm like it's kind of nice like when Sunday rolls around like I don't have that Sunday feeling right. like the Sunday sad series like that was a thing and when I was in school like growing up elementary school middle school high school like I could never enjoy Sunday because oh, yeah. I yeah that young isn't that crazy because I knew Monday was coming and school was coming oh, okay. and I didn't even hate school like I had no, all these I, friends I agree. And, I, I but it was too. like that and I've worked jobs where I had that Sunday, the Sunday scaries, like I had that, but I don't feel that now. Like I don't feel that in this industry. I don't like, like when Sunday rolls around and I'm off, you know, that's not always the case, but when I am like, it really is nice to have that Sunday. I don't like let it 
trail into. And I, I agree with like what you're saying that sometimes it's important to create boundaries with clients that it's not that I won't get back to you. It's just that like I'm off spending time with my family. And- or if their event is three months away and you have, I always tell my clients, this is your week. If you need to contact me 17 times in the day, this is your week. I get it. Yeah. So sometimes that's the thing. We're giving that because I'm not a big factory company, right? So we have to give that attention to that client. Right. And sometimes we do have two, three in that week. So it's like, we'll get to you. Nothing's that pressing. Yeah. I have clients that I've been working with for over 14 years that might call me that Thursday for an event Saturday. Oh my gosh. And they've been doing that. If I have two weeks with them, it's a luxury. Um, and they'll call me like, hey, this I need for this Saturday. I need, we, we need floral. We need catering. We need, we'll oh do gosh. it. Oh gosh. I, uh, if you go on Vogue.com, I actually planned a, uh, it was supposed to be an engagement party. And it, they said, well, we have friends coming. Let's make it a surprise wedding. Oh, my God. So in two weeks, we actually planned a surprise wedding with rain contingency, flew in a band from Germany, catering, all of that. So, <laughs> so oh like my saying, God. just yeah. because I don't get back, it's not because I'm, we're lost. It's because there might be some other things happening yeah. and we will get back to you. And if we don't, in the time, send another email, but just... Right. And it's also in, in today's times, you have a lot of people who are getting married like later on this year and they're so like nervous right now. And I'm like, listen, I get like you being nervous, but I can't predict the future for like November, December, 2021. Oh, I can. Hold on, let me check my phone. <laughs> and I'm just like, I'm like, I promise, like I have like, I, I know I'm like saying things now, like I have my finger on the pulse. I'm like, I can't believe I'm that person who says these things, but it's true. It's like, I have my finger on the pulse. I'm like getting the news and like letting you know it as soon as I can. But like, Let's see what happens as the summer goes on, as we get closer to your date. Right now, things are opening up. Opening oh, so we're up, talking we about the COVID specific. The COVID specific. I mean, of it all. week to week, it's such a. It, this has been such mm-hmm. a fast moving thing. Right. I was telling clients about that were worried about July, three four months ago. I said, I Yeah. Said, Gee, take it month by month. Every yeah. month, let's revisit if you want. But you know, yeah, I always say I'm like revisit before your invitations are set to right. go out and and see what happens then. But it's like we now see that so much is opening up. We are seeing more flexibility. We are seeing more people are getting vaccinated. So like things are I'm not going to say they're normal, but we're seeing a little bit more normalcy than what right. we had. So I'm like, don't don't jump to like feeling so nervous when we finally are seeing things go in a positive direction. Correct. Correct. It's not like we're back in January. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Or, or March, 2020 right. when, right. when it was the right. end of the world, right. literally. I mean, we're so fortunate to be where we are in the world. I mean, yeah. we all have access. You can walk in now without an appointment to get a vaccine. Right. Um, right. There's not like lines wrapped around outside for COVID tests. I mean, people were going and doing that before they saw their families around the holidays and the lines were wrapped outside in the freezing cold for yeah. two to three hours. It's sick like, doing that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I would see those lines. I'm like, I don't know. I think I'm better off just like, <laughs> you yeah. know. Connecticut, I have to say, is an amazing state and the governor did a great job at keeping people safe, at making testing available, at even getting the vaccine out the way they structured it age-wise. And, you know, by May 19th, the reason why they picked that date is because the past couple of weeks they've been vaccinating 10% of the population a week. Wow. Um, yeah, so by May 19th, most people will have had, I don't remember exactly if it was the first shot or second shot, but I think it might have been the second shot. That's why they picked that date. And I, I, I got my second shot, and it's, you know, it's impressive. The, the infection rate here is down to 1%. Yeah. That's and it. they're under, Nothing. I think the last number on Friday was 134 hospitalizations. Um, for the it, whole state. For the whole state. Yeah. I mean, it went from 300 to 100 like that. Um, it's, and the state was always telling us when we get to 250 and under for five days in a row, it's you know there's so much it might be a little wishy-washy here that's when we know we're in the clear right and the fact that we're at 130 on friday i got i'm, I'm 
you know, it's, it's always interesting to see the numbers at the end of the day, and now we'll get the average from the weekend. Um, you know, it's, I was so fortunate to be in the state. We had restaurants, like the, we had indoor and yeah. outdoor dining here the whole, almost the whole time. Um, so Connecticut, as I was so fortunate to be here during all yeah. this. So with the industry coming back a little bit, what do you- Roaring 20s. Roaring 20s. Is that, is that what you think? Is that, is that what you think the future of the, the business is gonna be like? Here's my hope. My hope is that we value celebrating togetherness and that any event, be it a corporate, be it a wedding, be it a bar mitzvah, be it anything, we really appreciate what it means to be in a room together and be able to celebrate. In some countries, it's fear of you know, religious fears or, or whatever fears that that's, that's why you celebrate. Here, a virus made us stay separate and away from each other. So I hope for events that first and foremost, we appreciate being together and having the ability to celebrate. Yeah. And I remember a long time ago when you came to a party, you didn't care about the food. You didn't care, is the DJ gonna be good? Is the music gonna be good? Because we wanna dance. To dance. And yeah. I really hope for everybody, and I tell every bride and groom, you're the role model for your event. If a good event for you means that you get to mingle and go table to table, it doesn't matter what the DJ plays, because your guests are gonna follow you. And if mingling and talking is what's the most important to you, which is fine, yeah. that's what your party's gonna be. But if you want people dancing and having a great time, if you're on the dance floor, everybody's on the dance floor. And I make a promise when I'm DJing that you'll be able to talk to your guests on the dance floor while they're partying and having a good time. That's the quality of the sound you're gonna get. And the, one of the favorite things I do now is whenever someone's in front of my speaker and the dance floor's packed, I show that there's, you can stand in front of my speakers because the sound quality is so good. But my hope for the, my hope for, for the industry is really that, that we all appreciate being able to be together again. And I think that's, yeah. if that's the thing, we're, we re, it's not that we have to throw a party because it's a wedding, that we really want to celebrate life and celebrate the ability to congregate and the ability to celebrate, right? Because a lot of places yeah. are still shut down. I think that, that would, that's just going to be the, the first intention for everything we plan. Because now yeah. it's like, guess what? I want this killer photo booth because I want to, you know, have pictures yeah. of of everybody together having fun a little more silly than than what the photographer would do, right? We want to dance our brains out, so we want a killer light show. So it's yeah. going to open those things up. And I think people see like how precious life is now that they're like they might not be going for that three four hundred person wedding, but they're going to have like a hundred and fifty super like tight to them people I hope they go for the three four hundred we can see 350 in yes and here for here <laughs> listen for here in the Knowlton in, in Connecticut we're talking 350 here okay <laughs> just an intimate size of yeah. 350 you know with 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 lighting and the whole nine yards and the DJ and the outside deck and band yeah, DJ band DJ everything electric violinist percussionist yeah, yeah everything all it, yes. you need it all you yeah. need it all yeah <laughs> um, I, I, I think I, everyone's saying it, roaring 20s, roaring 20s, you know, creating those experiences like the Argentine tango dinner night here, yeah. like uh, a magic show dinner night, you know, like that kind of stuff. I yeah. feel like people are going to want to get together more, want to get out more, want experiences so more. Yeah. Um, Especially now as we're entering into good weather here in the tri-state area, warm, outside, people just, I think people are just like itching to get out. Yep, yep, and are, are, are hopefully feeling more comfortable to get out. Yeah, and I think so. I think we see with this rollout of the vaccine and so many people vaccinated and, you know, so many set to, to be, I think that we're gonna see What are we gonna do when normalcy. we're in a public space and no one's wearing masks? I'm gonna be thrilled. Yeah? Are you well, going to be a little hesitant, a little... I don't know how I'm going to react. I, you know, 
Well, like, I mean, I've told this story to a few people, but, like, my boyfriend says I'm, like, one step away from being in a mosh pit at a concert. Nice. Which is, like, not the truth, but, like... Or in 20s, you're ready for it. <laughs> but I'm just, like, you know what? What I, like, live for, like, outside of my work life is, like, being at a concert, like, just especially Jones Beach outside, like, getting to enjoy that, and I'm, like... They built a killer amphitheater here at Bridgeport. Live Nation. And now that I know that it's just a quick ferry ride yeah. across. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, that's just, I think so many people miss. We're going to do private concerts here too. Um, we need a private concert here yeah. along with the Argentine tango yeah. dance-a-thon because like I can just like bring my dance shoes awesome. and like jump right in there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I, I hope it's going to be, I know it's going to be exciting times. It, oh, it is. And I think we're like right on the cusp of like being there like so shortly and the music industry too has been kind of flat with covid yeah i think a lot of people have been holding on to a lot of music that is going to start so it's going to be a renaissance that the movie industry right because we saw that take a huge hit you know they've with, been holding back a like lot. i will say netflix killed it though this year yep. absolutely killed it thank you netflix and thank you netflix although i've watched every like show now especially the ones that are only one season what are you watching right now um right now i'm watching dynasty so i love it that you said that i love because i'm watching the love boat i don't know what that is okay but that... so the love boat <laughs> the love boat is awesome it's uh, you have to watch an episode it's awesome. So I'm watching old shows from the 70s and 80s. Okay. Yeah. And that dynasty falls into the 80s. Yeah, I'm watching the like whatever. Dynasty, right? I'm watching the new one. Oh, you youngins. It's so good though. It is so good. Every night I come home and wow, I'm like I, I feel a little older now. <laughs> Oh man! Wait, I'm watching highly, the new Dynasty. Highly recommend the new one. I've never actually seen the old one, um, but the new one—it's like supposed to be like based in Atlanta, and um, oh my God, it's just glitz, glamour, and I think that's what also makes me feel good because you I see all these. I got more gray hair. I think <laughs> just from that. What's the love boat? Oh my God! <laughs> I'll look it up though later because after do. Dynasty, I'm gonna need a new show. Well, no, to watch. you're watching the new Dynasty. They didn't make a new Love Boat. The funny thing is, a Love Boat, <laughs> it's an HR nightmare. Like if you like how people interacted back then. The basically the crew of this boat hooks up with passengers on every episode. Oh. It's like, but not in that way. It's in the innocent. 70s, 80s way. <laughs> and I'll, you watch it and you're like, this is an HR nightmare. But it's it's hilarious. It's much simpler times. and, and uh, I know. And a, I would love simpler times. Yeah. <laughs> Just need to have fun. You know, we, I think the yeah. get back to simpler times is let's dance. And once let's we get dance. back to dancing. Yeah. And we can dance together. And let's bring back ballroom dancing. The, oh my God. Yes. If that came back as a normal thing, you know, and we kind of... I'll kind of stop with this for a little bit. Mm -hmm. I, I like joke around because I always like made this joke that when I get married, like I don't want to do the hora. I'm, I'm Jewish. And now, but like after this past year, I realized, wow, that would be so weird if I didn't have a hora at my wedding. Yeah. So it, you know what? It took a pandemic for me to realize like the hora is very special. It so. is. And you know, we've had non-Jewish clients request you request to do it because they think it's awesome. It, it, it is, you know, it's just like one of those moments where your whole wedding like comes together to celebrate you. And um, yeah, so I'm looking forward to the day where I get married and we're doing a hora. Yes. <laughs> celebrate. So now where can everybody follow you? We, both businesses, Nicholson, um, the Knowlton, so that they can see everything that's going on here. So... On all social media, it's at Nicholson Events. On Perfect. Facebook, it's Nicholson Events. And um, for the Knowlton, it's at the Knowlton on Instagram. And the Knowlton, and it's Knowlton with a K. So like, no, no, the Knowlton. 
K-N-O-W-L-T-O-N. And we have the, the websites, NicholsonEvents.com and TheNolton.com. And obviously, if you check into like all the geo tags and things like that, you'll be able to see it's literally Wynwood, Miami over here yes. with all these with all these murals. Yeah, Everybody's going to want to come over here and get an Instagram worthy picture. Yes. And we did um, an outdoor. We've done last. We had we're able to do one outdoor pop up dinner during COVID. And, it, and people were like, this is like being in Miami because things were lit up and you were on the water and it, it was it's awesome. It's so, a perfect spot. Yeah. It's a perfect spot. So everybody make sure to go and like and share and follow the Knowlton and Nicholson events and check out everything that they have to offer for your special day. Honestly, you guys have everything to offer here for someone's special day. Wedding, hair, makeup on site, lighting, DJ, band, anything that you want. Outside space overlooking the water with no traffic. I mean, hello. Parking. Parking. I mean, <laughs> it's... <laughs> everything. We got everything over here. We got everything. So... Thank well, you. Sharon, thank, thank you, you so much for coming it's on pleasure. my show today. It was so much fun being here. Um, I can't wait to take all my Instagram worthy pictures outside. Let's go. Obviously, we got to go do it. And um, I look forward to working together very soon now yes. that the industry is back yes. up and, and, you know, it's back. It's back. It's back. It's back. I'm ready. We're going to a concert soon. We never went away. We went on pause. True. That's it. We. Yeah, and we now ready. we are fully hit play. Yeah. Play, Fast we're forward. ready to go. Let's go. Fast forward. X2 speed. <laughs> we're ready. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you all so much for tuning into today's episode of the Bride Tender Podcast. Um, we put out a new episode every single Monday on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, uh, YouTube, wherever you listen to podcasts, and of course, watch it on YouTube to get a glimpse of the space here at the Knowlton today. Um, if you're not already following me, please follow me on Instagram at the Bride Tender for all fun facts on the wedding industry ways to save money on your special day, and of course, hiring the best in the business to execute your wedding. Make sure to go follow Chiron at Nicholson Events and at the Knowlton. Get some inspiration for your special day and see what they can do for you uh, here in Connecticut and really anywhere. We travel everywhere for e our clients. Everywhere. Um, until next week, mix yourself a cocktail, slide into my DMs with questions you want answered, on all things weddings. Stay sane, stay healthy, and we'll catch you next week. Bye.